This video is sponsored by VIPSCDKey.com. VIP SCD Key is a marketplace website where you can purchase game keys and software keys with no hassle. VIP SCD Key offers a legit Windows 10 Pro key for only $21. But to make it more awesome, they will be giving another 20% discount. Just type our coupon code XTNC to get it for only $15. If you're in the Philippines, purchasing is very easy. You can use PayPal, Paymaya, or Gcash. Visit VIPSCDKey.com now. I'll put the link in the video description below. Hey, what's up guys? Action here. Since it's the year 2023 na and marami ng bagong components, I think it's now time for a personal PC build upgrade. Siyempre, first of all, shout out to Asus ROG, Intel, and PeForce for providing the components for this PC build, which I'll talk about shortly. Pero kung napanood nyo na yung previous livestream ko where I rebuild the parts, I think may idea na kayo kung ano-ano yun. So in this video, I'll be building my personal rig for 2023. I'll explain na din kung bakit ito yung mga ginamit natin on this PC build and maybe counting benchmarks lang din just so that you guys have an idea about the performance and sakaling gusto nyong mag-build ng similar configuration. First on our parts list is the CPU or processor which is the Intel Core i7-12700KF. Yes, 12th gen ito and not 13th gen but this is still a great choice for my application, mostly editing and some gaming na rin. With its 12 cores and 20 threads, 8 of which are P-cores or performance cores, which is yung sasalo ng heavy loads or tasks, and 4 A-cores or efficiency cores, which will be in charge of most of the background tasks. Halimbawa, nag edit ka ng video or naglalaro ka ng games. This will mostly be handled by the performance cores. And then on the background, either nagpapatugtog ka, naka-idle, or simpleng web browsing, and any other background tasks will be handled naman by the e-course since hindi ganun kabigat yung need na resources nito. And dahil F-variant nito, wala itong built-in graphics or integrated GPU. So need natin ng discrete graphics card to pair with this. Next, for the motherboard, which is the ROG Strix C790i Gaming Wi-Fi. Kahit na mini ITX ang form factor nitong motherboard natin, it still has a lot of modern features like wireless connectivity, PCIe 5.0, and these expansion features like the ROG Strix Hive and ROG FPS2 card, which helps to save space. We're settling on a smaller case then kasi, which I'll talk about later on. But also, I will not be using any PCIe expansion slots, aside from the graphics card. For our CPU cooler, we'll be cooling the Core i7 chip with the ROG Strix Rio 3 360 ARGB White. Gustong gusto ko yung slimmer bezels niya, unlike most AIO blocks with displays. Kaya mas mukhang premium. And the mini LED array which they call the Anime Matrix LED Display. Where you can show custom effects and animations and even some core system parameters like CPU temps and usage for example. Though hindi nga lang siya full LCD display unlike the ROG Rio Gen 2. Equipped din ito with the latest 8th gen Asetek Pump 3-phase motor as well as vacuum-coated display lens, aluminum components, and of course, white ARGB fans. It is also compatible with the latest CPUs from Intel that are using the sockets LGA1700, 1200, and the AMD as well, which are using sockets AM5 and AM4. On the GPU or graphics card, we have the very huge ROG Strix RTX 4080 16GB Aussie Edition. Obviously, this would appear larger than our motherboard, mainly due to its massive heatsinks needed to cool down this RTX 4080 GPU inside. Pero bawing bawi naman natin ito sa performance. So the size compromise is somehow justified. Siyempre, I'm editing in 4K na rin, and with the help of GPU acceleration, mas mapapabilis yung workflow ko and rendering as well as better performance in either 1440p or 4K gaming. Of course, there's also the new AV1 video encoder decoders na magagamit ko na rin if I stream, which means I can stream higher quality image even at lower bandwidth. Nga pala, I featured this ROG Strix RTX 4080 in one of my previous videos, so if you want to know more about this card, you can check that out on my channel. For the memory or RAM, so we'll be using the T-Force Delta RGB DDR5 32GB kit na color white. Actually, like I said on the live stream video, during the parts reveal for this, need ko na din mas malaking memory capacity since we're shooting and editing our videos in 4K na. And particularly, since I'm using DaVinci Resolve, medyo malakas na siya kumain ng RAM, especially kung marami kang layers sa timeline. Ina pa naman sa akin yung 32GB, although kung talagang hardcore 4K editing na, I'd recommend putting at least 64GB na talaga. Then on the storage, T-Force pa rin syempre with their Cardea Z44L, 1TB Gen 4 NVMe SSD. So this one has read-write rating of 3,500MB per second and 3,000MB per second respectively. Ideally, if you're on video editing and kung kaya ng budget, 
you should really be getting a fast NVMe SSD. Mas maganda kung Gen 4 and above. Since the software needs to preload preview files. Mas maganda kung mas mabilis ang storage device para mas smooth ang playback ng clips sa timeline. For our power supply, there's a new ROG Loki 850W Platinum SFXL PSU, a feature-rich power supply packed into the compact SFXL form factor, which is the perfect size for the case na gagamitin natin. Meron itong premium features like 80 plus platinum efficiency, fully modular cables, ROG heat sinks which facilitate lower temperatures, enabling longer 0 dB operation by turning off the fan when the system load is low for ultra-quiet operations. ATX 3.0 and PCIe Gen 5 device compatible na rin ito, so it means we can use the new high-power PCIe power connector directly without any adapters. There's also illuminated ARGB fans and ROG text logo on this side. May bracket na din kasama for SFXL to ATX just in case nagagamitin siya sa ATX PSU slot. And syempre, this is backed by a 10-year warranty for peace of mind. And finally, on the case, we have the ASUS Prime AP201 White. While this case can support up to micro ATX motherboard and ATX PSU, we're using the ITX SFX form factors here to help save space and to show the possibilities na rin nitong case. There's filtered mesh all over the case, so airflow will be definitely not a problem here, as well as dust buildup inside the rig. Very easy to build on unlike other SFF cases. Kasyang kasya yung RTX 4080 natin. So there's all the parts, now it's time to build quickly with this time-lapse build montage. Alright, so sacrifice ng isang fan dito sa 360mm na AIO ni ROG Rio 3. So, bakit? Kasi tumatama na. Uh, pag dinulo ko kasi, so tatlong adjustment yan. Pag nilagay sa pinakataas, tatama na yung kable. Ito. So, ang pinaka ano niya is sa gitna. So, pag sa dito kasi sa pinakadulo is tatama na itong GPU. Guys, if you're using this case, tapos maglalagay kayo ng mini ITX, tapos maglalagay din kayo ng RTX 4080 na Strix, um, dapat guys, mag micro ATX kayo. So bakit? Kasi pagka mini ITX, nasa pinakataas yung slot. Okay? Ito yung mangyayaring configuration. Sacrifice kayo ng isang fan. Pero pagka micro ATX yung ginamit nyo, so dito nyo malalagay sa second, dito, and third slot. So bababa yun. So mangyayari, pwede nyo nang magamit to yung pinakababang uh, configuration nitong sa PSU. Okay? So, wag din kayo gagamit ng standard na power supply pagka maglalagay kayo ng RTX 4080. Bakit? Kasi, uh, yung standard power supply, mag extend yan dito. So, tatama na rin. Okay? Nang yun, napapansin nyo, tumatama na, diba? So, dapat ang gamitin yung power supply is the, yung maliit lang. SFXL, ito yung gamit ko. This is the ROG Loki. So, that's a SFXL form factor. Okay? So, yun yung magiging problema nyo. So, baka magpalit ako ng motherboard dito para lang makabit ko ito. Kasi, itong case na to, uh, the support at 360mm. But, yun nga, problema ko is kailangan kong mababa to dito uh, using a micro ATX na motherboard. Alright. 
I think the build went pretty well. So this is actually the form factor and color theme being white that I prefer nowadays. Hindi siya masyadong malaki but still a very capable 4K gaming and editing rig. Okay din yung performance nung case particularly with the airflow which means better thermals. In gaming, nag average at around 53 degrees Celsius and 76 degrees Celsius max sa CPU. And sa GPU naman, nag average lang din at around 56 degrees Celsius and 66 degrees Celsius max sa GPU. Yon. So, before kay end video guys, magpapasalamat ulit ako sa mga sponsor ng parts dito sa PC Build Upgrade natin for 2023. Huge shout out kay Asus ROG, Intel, and T4s. Ayan, shout out po sa maraming maraming salamat dito. So, after this, check nyo na rin yung benchmarks which I tested with 4K ultra settings with ray tracing on and DLSS 3 performance enabled. And nga pala guys, sali kayo sa aking munting pag away. So you can check na lang yung mechanics on the video description. Good luck! Enjoy guys! This has been Action. So like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you on my next PC build. Thank you.